and by Provident Travel. Hi, everybody. I'm Tim Moreland, and welcome in to show number one in the 86th season, the Dave Curry Show. Coach, you were dramatic last night. You held them to the last second just for the ratings. 14 seconds to go. Big win in Blacksburg. Super effort. Well, it was a great win. Always, always nice to get off uh, with number one, but uh, uh, now it's on to Miami, and uh, we're excited about the, getting our first win. It seemed like you had some problems throughout the game. You shot yourself in the foot a few times, but you persevered, and I thought it said a lot for your players. I think we grew up an awful lot last night. You know, it's not easy to win at Blacksburg. A lot of people don't win down at Virginia Tech. And going back there this year after a great victory a year ago, I thought brought a lot out of our football players. Uh, we won the battle, but we lost the war uh, with some injuries. But at the same time, the victory is a very good feeling. Quick injury update. We knew when Rob Williams, your fullback, went down, it was serious. He was probably lost for the year, but it goes beyond that. We won't know for sure, Tim, uh, where we are injury-wise till we see uh, uh, the players report today. But uh, Robbie is in uh, University Hospital uh, with a broken leg, and uh, our thoughts are with him this morning. But the young man who came in, the youngster from Fort Mitchell Beachwood, Scott Tackett, performs for you the immaculate reception. Well, in our church, we call it the tip drill. But uh, Scott, uh, in so many ways, uh, uh, brought out the personality of the football team because he was in the right place at the right time because of his commitment and how hard he works and what a great play he made. It was as fun as any game I ever broadcast. Let's get to the first half highlights. This is fun. Tim, we uh, open up the game receiving the opening kickoff, and this is Reggie Taylor that will take the ball two yards deep in the end zone. Uh, Reggie and uh, Leonard Cry are returning kickoffs for us. Uh, we've tried to establish a running game. Here's Taylor off to the left side uh, for the first play of the game. Uh, actually, Dan McCoy now audibles to a play to the right side. And uh, this is Taylor up the middle. Uh, Virginia Tech is fired up and uh, hustling to the ball, obviously. Uh, it was a noisy crowd. And here's the first punt of the game, and it's blocked. And this is remis reminiscent of last year's uh, Virginia Tech-Cincinnati game where, they, where we blocked their first punt. In the first half, that's about all they did in terms of scoring. Well, our defense rises to the occasion down here. The quarterback runs in for a touchdown. But I'll tell you what, uh, um, it took them three plays to get in, and our defense played very well the first half. That official reminds me of our uh, radio sideline commentator, Bob McLaughlin. Uh, sometimes those officials can get picked off. <laughs> Here's McCoy to Taylor again, the second drive up the middle. Uh, you're going to see throughout the game, Reggie had great determination in running. The coin's back to throw here. This is a pass that hooked up to Joe Heiss, who had an exceptional evening catching the ball. He's your possession guy, isn't he? He's a good uh, possession receiver. He makes big plays. That's the nice thing. This is Robert Taylor on a draw play that gets hit and fumbles, and we turn the ball over now for the second time. This is uh, UC on defense, and once again, the, uh, Alex Gordon making a good hit there. Rob Niehoff, number 40. We're back on offense. Again, Taylor is up the middle. Uh, this is a draw play. There's a late hit that was not called, by the way. This is McCoy back to pass now, and he's throwing outside here, which is completion to Jason Stargell. Uh, we threw the ball well last night. We did show signs of first game uh, uh, jitters, but I thought as a whole, we executed the offense. This is Joe Heiss on a big completion over the middle after the fake to Taylor. Here's a blitz now, and Dan floats the ball a little bit to the tight end, and we get it picked off. Again, our third turnover in three series. In fairness to Dan, he had a man right in his face as he threw it. We did have some pressure, yes. That was Irvin Owens making the tackle. Uh, back on defense now, they're good running back. That's uh, Tony Catchings uh, chasing from behind, and Richard Rhodes uh, making the tackle. Here's good uh, pressure by Bob Leshneck, really coming hard. Bob had played his first game as a defensive lineman. John Sawyer had good coverage there, number 11. And here Virginia Tech catches this on a, uh, the tight end block first, and then he snuck back. That's a play, though. He fumbled the ball into the end zone, which is a touchback for UC. So that gave us the ball in the 20-yard line. That, uh, that was our first break of the game. That's Robert Williams on a pass. 
Here we come back. Reggie runs a quick reverse here. Dan McCoy blocking. Reggie takes it up the middle, and look at the determination. That's three, four, five people bouncing off of him. McCoy here is back to pass. This is, uh, again, in the second quarter now. We're moving the ball offensively. And this is a hookup to Jason Stargell again with a key first down. At this point, of course, you're down 7 nothing. That's right, and we come back now and punt. I might add that uh, Arnold Brooks uh, made his first college snap. Uh, it was a low snap the first time, but he snapped very well the rest of the game. We're in the second quarter again. McCoyne is throwing. There's a pass hook up to Stargell, which is a quick out, a key first down. McCoyne back again to pass. And the rifles the ball in here again to Roosevelt Mutes. Uh, I might add that uh, our offensive center, Pat Lavelle, uh, played his first college game at center and did a good job. Once again, there's a completion to Roosevelt Mutes. Scott Tackett leading the way. And uh, Phil Insalaka comes on and kicks his first college field goal, which is a 39-yarder. Dave, he was most impressive to me. Well, he has a live leg, and uh, he certainly came up with a big kick. Here's our defense. That's John Lewis running to the ball. Defensively, we ran to the ball, and I, again, felt that uh, we kept our team in the ball game because of the way the defense played early in the first, first half. One of the things you'll notice is their quarterback ran around the field quite a bit and made big plays. Look at the game tackling here. Again, that's uh, Daryl Nash come making a big play at the middle linebacker spot. Look at this play here. That's Tony Catchings from the outside making a big sack. And then they missed the field goal here, and this gives us, gives us the ball on the uh, first down going the other way. Again, the defense held them to no points. Once again, McCoy throwing the out. You're going to see a lot of completions here. They gave us the uh, short out, so we just took it, tried to uh, take advantage of moving the football. McCoy comes all the way back across the field to Stargell. Look at Reggie Taylor down there out of the backfield uh, trying to make a block. I mentioned to you Pat Lavelle playing at center for the first time. Irvin Owens played at guard for the first time last night. The left guard position did a good job. Here's a boot play, and look at this. This is Joe Heiss into the end zone for UC's first touchdown of 1986. So that puts you up with the extra point, 10 to 7, late in the half. We went into the uh, halftime uh, ahead, 10 to 7. Our defense kept us in the ball game the entire first half because we turned the ball over the first three times we had it. We had made some mistakes. We got some calls against us, but I thought defensively we were playing hard and offensively we just had to stop turning the ball over. It was a two-edged sword. No question you moved the ball virtually at will in the first half, but had but 10 points to show for it. I think sometimes your first ball games, there's some jitters, some new people. Uh, defensively, uh, we played hard and offensively we executed. And yet, second half now is yet to come, and it'll be an interesting outcome. I can't wait for the last 14 seconds. That's right. We'll get to that as the second half highlights are coming up on the Dave Curry Show. Well, the first half is over, and you lead 10 to 7, but it probably should have been 35 to 7 the way you moved the football. What did you tell them at halftime, Dave? Tim, actually, uh, I complimented them because we played uh, so poorly in turnovers, yet we were ahead. And defensively, we played very well early. And all, as we posed them the question going out of the locker room, guys, uh, last year Virginia Tech lost the game because they gave it to us. This year we're going to go get it ourselves. And that's basically what we did. And I think Bill Bilde had to feel good about his situation at halftime because he dodged a few bullets, a lot of yards, few points. Well, and certainly we moved the ball well and didn't get in the end zone, but hopefully the second half will be better. Second half is better. That's where you win. Let's go to the highlights of half number two on the Dave Curry Show. Again, we start off with the football here, and this is uh, Alan McKinney who uh, ran the ball. That's where Robert Williams got his injury right there at the bottom of the screen. Here's uh, Reggie Taylor around on a counter to the right. Uh, Reggie is uh, just scrapping and scrapping here. McCoy back to pass, and this was a crucial uh, fourth down play, and we just missed the ball and had to turn it over. Tim, what's happening here now is it's the third quarter. We had an injury. Virginia Tech has really get fired up, and again, they uh, turn on the steam a little bit. The third period was all Tech. Well, certainly uh, they're moving the ball very well. That's John Lewis again making a key tackle. 
Uh, Ron Trout played his first game last night, number seven, made some tackles. They're running with great determination here, and they've got some momentum going. Virginia Tech with the ball. Quarterback goes to the left, and there's pressure again by Leshnick. And this was excellent coverage here by John Sawyer. John played very well last night. One of many. They uh, settled for a field goal, and I might add here that, again, the defense holds them to just three after a big turnover. Kinzer had missed two, and he's usually a dead-eye kicker. That's the first one he made in three tries. He was a lot better the second half. Uh, here's Gerald Ware uh, covering an out pattern. Uh, their young quarterback did an excellent job last night, too. Rob Niehoff, Daryl Nash running. Uh, Daryl runs very well for a middle linebacker. Quarterback's rolling to the left and uh, has a little time, and uh, we get hurt on an out and up, and uh, they get in the end zone, and again, all Virginia Tech. That's their great split in. Snell, who caught 13 balls here a year ago, and they take the lead 17-10. Well, we're back here. Here, Taylor is down on the ground when he knocks the ball loose here. When a player hits the ground, and fumbles and the ball's blown dead. Reggie again gets the ball knocked out loose out of bounds. And there's the record right there. Reggie Taylor becoming the all-time leading rusher at UC with 83 yards at that point. Well, certainly that was not in our minds at that time. As a matter of fact, no one knew it till after the game. But uh, Reggie deserves uh, any of that recognition he's gotten. McCoying back to pass. This is a, uh, we go up top for the bomb and uh, we get it intercepted. But I might add that this was as good as a punt because the ball is now in the four yard line. That's why coaches don't mind throwing deep in the middle, do they? Well, if you're going to ever have an interception, make sure it's a 45-yard interception, at least. Here, Virginia Tech moves the ball. John Lewis over there, Gerald Ware, Ron Trout running, number seven. And they come back on a counter pass, and look at this defense. Isn't that great defense there? Uh, guys just flying the football. Nash is there. Saw Asbeck there. Here's again Virginia Tech back to pass, and they uh, sneak a back out of the backfield. This was a big first down for them. That's Trout making the, the tackle out of bounds there. That gave them a big first down. That was the third and 15 at that time. Here's this fullback up the middle on a trap play. It's John Lewis making the tackle. Alex Gordon played very well last night. Alex is a stalwart of our defense, and there's Gerald Nash making a big hit, and Gordon, of course, taking him out of bounds. Leshnick also running well, and again, they settle for a field goal. I want to remind all of us that when the defense can hold them to a field goal, uh, that's certainly an advantage. Now you're down 20 to 10. Things don't look very good for UC in the third quarter here. We are down 30 to 10. We go into the fourth quarter. Now we have a big hookup to Joe Heights. Now it's getting edgy time, and I think UC you're going to see making some big plays. Uh, here's big pressure. McCoyne steps up, avoids a rush, and again, uh, makes a big hook up there. Arnez Perry. Arnez Perry. Arnez played uh, very well last night at the tight end spot. Reggie bounces outside. Look at the determination here. A lot of people running after him, and he's bouncing off tacklers. Reggie is determined, and when people see him fumble many times, it's because he struggles so long. Second and third tacklers Second get there. Second and third effort. Look at the quick feet getting in for the touchdown. Now we're on the scoreboard. We've got new life. Virginia Tech back with the ball. And look at this sack. That's catching from behind. Good pursuit, good gang tackling, a good sack. Quarterback rolls to the right. We got some pressure here. Big play again. Dan Sellers. Dan Sellers made a big play, yes. Here they punt the ball, and they shank it off to the right, and we've got new life now. That turned out, Dave, to be a four-yard punt. Tech still leading 20-17. to 17. Our backs are against the wall. McCoy back to pass, steps up. Look at this. That's Joe Heist, dependable Heist, isn't it? Now we're talking with this drive beginning 1.39 before the game's end. This is uh, Al McKinney on a screen pass to the left, slips. Uh, fourth down, play action, McCoy back, steps up, a guy in his face, tipped by Arnez Perry, tipped play, Scott Tackett catches it, goes down the right side, great play, great reaction, first down, UC has a chance. That was on fourth and six, do or die. Here's McCoy back to pass. He steps up and hits Joe Heiss. The ball is down to the 12-yard line. The clock is running. We have about 40 seconds left. McCoy back again to throw. Finds Scott Tackett over the middle. A great catch, by the way, from behind. Here we come, coach. This is a great pass to Tackett in the flat, and he scores for the touchdown. A great block made by Reggie Taylor in the backside. Now, we're going to watch this again because you're going to draw it later on in the coach's corner segment. It's a fullback 
flat pass. Pull back in the flat. Now here's the final kickoff. We put it on the ground so we can run out the clock. There's about 13 seconds. Great the defense is just trying to. Well, certainly if you'll run around. Now there's six seconds left in the clock. Uh, we're playing uh, prevent defense. They go back and throw a bomb. And Richard Rhodes, you'll see, jump up and intercept this ball to end the game. Now, in my church, this is Hail Mary. What is it in yours, Dave? It's an interception to, to win the game. <laughs> and that was history. As the Bearcats win a thriller, come from behind victory 24 to 20 at Virginia Tech. As we go back to the third quarter, you've been throwing under patterns, using the out patterns, the hooks, basic under the coverage passes. Now you go up top in the third quarter. Why did you go long? We felt at the time that uh, in our uh, game plan, we wanted to go up top a couple of times. So in the third quarter, we came out and tried to get a couple people deep. And uh, we went for the bomb. The one time was an interception, uh, maybe a couple of uh, uh, bad reads. Uh, but we, I don't know if it was going long as much as we, the momentum changed a little bit in that third quarter. And Virginia Tech had a, a lot of fans rooting for them. Uh, one fourth down play, we had an audible that uh, we didn't get to. So uh, they really had some momentum. The key thing is, our guys didn't fold. They hung in there and they came back. Did you feel that going long loosened them up as you had hoped it would because it was the under patterns again which brought you the victory? Well, we've got good speed, and if we can push them deep, that helps us underneath. It was a thrilling victory. For as long as I've been around college football, I've heard coaches talk about climbing the hill in Blacksburg. Not too many come down alive. Well, we're happy to get out of there alive. Uh, what we did is we hung in there, snuck in at the end, got it at the end, and got out of town. Once wasn't enough on that pullback pass to Tackett, where you win the uh, football game 24 to 20. We're going to look at it again when we come back, and then we're going to go to the board, and Dave Curry turns coach on television. The clinic is straight ahead on the Dave Curry Show. Dave Curry show coaches clinic the coach will show us right on the board the touchdown play that won the game well Tim we have here a two tight end formation with the back set to the strong side and what we like to do is to have everybody block on side up front we want the running back to fake the ball into the line like a run the quarterback will then pull the ball out and he will look for the fullback in the flat and or the wide receiver on an in route this is called pass 24. We hope we have man coverage down there. The key read is fullback one, wide receiver two. And as we'll see, the McCoy will throw the ball for a touchdown to Scott Tackett. Set to the right, McCoy's back, and there's Tackett in the flat catching the touchdown pass. I think the important thing here as we look at it again is look at the running back. Uh, Reggie Taylor will be the tailback, and as he fakes into the middle of the line, he's going to come back and block a backside blitz, and that's a key block for this play. The backside blitzer is Billy Myers, the corner. He's coming hard. There's Taylor at the top of the screen, knocks him down, and what a great block, and again, a touchdown play. It's easy, isn't it, Coach? When it works. That's right. <laughs> I thought the defense held you in the game much of the night. Let's talk a little bit about the defense. Your offense put them in some pretty tough situations. Well, we've got a defensive player, Rob Niehoff, that we're going to look at right now, and I think that's a special. The young man from Roger Bacon couldn't go away. Had to stay home for mom's home cooking. I'm a hometown boy, and uh, I think I'm really starting to reap the benefits. Uh, I'm getting a chance to play. I'm very excited. I, uh, I really enjoy having the hometown crowd. My parents come watch me play. I got a kick out of your comment the first time we talked about your staying at home and playing at UC. You said, well, I can enjoy both sides of the fence. I can go home for mom's home-cooked meals, and I can also stay up on campus and experience campus life. Sure, I only live about a half hour away, and uh, I get the best of both worlds. I, I go home and see mom and dad a lot, plus uh, I have my own little world down here at UC, so uh, I'm very happy that I stayed in town. With graduation approaching, what's the major? I'm a management major, and I'm anxious to get out in the business world. Let's talk a little bit about getting off to a fast start this year. You have an incredibly difficult schedule, in my opinion. Three teams that in many polls are in the top ten of the nation. How do you feel about the importance of a quick start? Well, there's no doubt that we have an excellent schedule. And uh, 
there is a great emphasis on us getting out, getting out of the gates early, getting a good start, and uh, we're really trying to uh, trying to key in on that. And uh, I know from the defensive aspect, we're really uh, trying to pick up the tempo because we know with a great schedule, we'll have to get a great start. And that's what we plan to do. Every one of you guys that I talk with, the answer is the same. What team do you point at the most? What team do you look forward to playing the most? It's always Miami. <laughs> Miami of Ohio. Why? Is it because of the proximity of the campuses primarily? I think so. The uh, intertown rivalry and uh, bragging rights. And it's true, we always like to look at uh, the schedules one game at a time, but to be very honest, the Miami game sticks out. Tell us a little bit about playing the safety position, your responsibilities. Well, I'm basically a strong safety, and uh, although I'm a pass defender, I have a lot of run support. So I'm almost a uh, rover back is what they, uh, a lot of other teams call it, the Big Ten teams call it a rover back, sort of a floating linebacker, and I'm an underneath coverage man. Nice young man, Rob Meehoff, number 40 in your program. We'll preview that UC Miami game when we come back on the Dave Curry Show. Next week at Riverfront Stadium, coach and two great running backs in Reggie Taylor and George Swan. Tim, it's going to shape up as a big game. This is the best Miami football team that they've had in years, and they've got high hopes for them. I don't know how good we are. I know we're banged up, but uh, uh, this is an important game for us. It should be a great battle, though, one of the best ever at Riverfront Stadium, the 130 Saturday. All right, now, when you look at your injury situation, you're going to evaluate that today, but we know we've lost Rob Williams. Rob Williams is out, as he's mentioned. Uh, Andre Jackson is out, uh, as we know of now. The others, we just lick our wounds and come back, and uh, we've got number one under our belt, and that's really going to help us this week. Number two is coming up, 1.30 at Riverfront Stadium on Sunday. We'll see you next week on the Dave Curry Show. Today, for UC supporters, six new folks went into the UC Hall of Fame, and a big day for this man, Reggie.